Hello everyone. I am myself Dr. Rajesh Gubba. I am the general medicine educator and a cardiologist. So as a part of the INICT revision series, the today's topic for revision will be medical emergencies. So I will be discussing various clinical scenarios and you should identify what is the diagnosis in that. So the first important clinical scenario is a 56 year old woman complains of unilateral stabbing pain on the surface of her scalp and around her eye. The pain is precipitated by washing or touching the specific area. What is this clinical scenario suggestive of? So the classical description of stabbing pain and this stabbing pain is increasing on washing or touching the specific area on the surface of the scalp or around the eye that is suggestive of trigeminal neuralgia. This trigeminal neuralgia is due to compression of trigeminal nerve root and this trigeminal nerve it has three important divisions ophthalmic division maxillary division and then mandibular division so the distribution of the pain it is very common in the mandibular division and as well as the maxillary division and this is commonly seen in females rather than males and age group at which you will see this is around 50 years and drug of choice in trigeminal neuralgia will be carbamazepine and if there is no response you give oxcarbamazepine and the alternative drugs for trigeminal neuralgia will be baclofen topiramate and as well as lamotrigine and what is the surgical treatment that you will do in trigeminal neuralgia that will be microvascular surgical decompression and as well as radio frequency rhizotomy that is a surgical treatment that you will do in trigeminal neuralgia now so this is in short trigeminal neuralgia presentation will be stabbing pain that will be there only for few seconds and that is present in the distribution of trigeminal nerve now you take the second clinical scenario a 28 year old obese woman complains of headache and double vision which is worse when lying down examination reveals papilledema but no focal signs and there are no abnormal findings on the ct scan what is this clinical scenario suggestive of <clears throat> so the female she is an obese female right and complaining of headache and double vision and examination reveals only papilledema but there is no focal neurological deficit and ct is absolutely normal this is suggestive of benign intracranial hypertension so benign intracranial hypertension is a condition of unknown etiology which is usually seen in obese females and there are certain drugs which are anticipated for the development of benign intracranial hypertension and what are those drugs that includes steroids and as well as tetracyclines and how will you diagnose that it is benign intracranial hypertension there will be raised intracranial pressure that is raised CSF pressure that you can diagnose by doing lumbar puncture and this headache of benign intracranial hypertension will resolve after doing the lumbar puncture and what is the chronic treatment that you will do in these individuals chronic treatment includes repeated lumbar punctures and as well as diuretics that is what you have to do for the treatment of benign intracranial hypertension and there are many conditions which are associated with idiopathic intracranial headache or idiopathic intracranial hypertension and these mainly drugs like tetracyclines and naledixic acid and nitrofurantoin and vitamin A supplements that is your retinoids and these are the list of drugs and these are the conditions which can cause idiopathic intracranial headache and third clinical scenario if you see a 30 year old man complains of a dull headache and that is worse when lying down or when coughing he has suffered recently suffered a seizure attack what do you think is the diagnosis in this patient so the description of early morning headache or the headache that is worsened on lying down or the headache that is worsened on coughing or the headache that is worsened on sneezing that is the classical description of raised intracranial pressure and that you will come across in case of the intracranial space occupying lesion so this is a description of an intracranial space occupying lesion and this intracranial space occupying lesion is the one which is inducing seizure within the individual that is the third clinical scenario 
And if you take the fourth clinical scenario, a 65 year old woman complains of constant aching pain around the right eye and radiating to the forehead. There is reduced vision in the eye which is red and congested with dilated pupil. So what is the diagnosis? So the individual having acute onset headache and the eye which is red and congested with a dilated pupil that is classical description in case of the acute glaucoma. So acute closed, closed angle glaucoma it most commonly affects long sighted elderly individuals and what exactly happens in glaucoma there is blockage of drainage of aqueous humor from anterior chamber via the canal of Schlem. And when will this attack of glaucoma precipitated or precipitated? So whenever there is pupillary dilatation that happens when the individual is in the dark area that will increase the contact between the iris and lens and can precipitate the attack of glaucoma. So please remember in case of glaucoma there will be headache, there will be pain within the right eye that will be radiating to the or pain in the eye radiating to the forehead and the eye it will be red and congested with a dilated pupil. Next you take the fifth clinical scenario. A 70 year old woman complains of headache, drowsiness, unsteadiness over the last couple of days. On examination she is found to have papilledema. She remembers falling over three weeks ago. So you see here three weeks ago she had a fall and at that time she was normal now she is complaining of headache drowsiness and unsteadiness and there is also papilledema so papilledema suggests what that there is raised intracranial pressure and what is the cause of her headache drowsiness and unsteadiness that would be because of the fall that she had three weeks ago and what she would have developed she would have developed subdural hematoma right subdural hematoma and uh, the cause for subdural hematoma, it is not just only history of head injury. Even the alcohol abuse is also the risk factor for subdural hematoma. And these patients, they should requ uh, they require an immediate neurosurgical opinion, right? Most of the times, these subdural hematomas, uh, like conservative treatment will be enough. Why? Because the clot, whatever is there, it will undergo resorption conservatively or spontaneously it will undergo resorption and papilledema what did I tell you that tells you that there is raised intracranial pressure now in early stages immediately after the head injury the individual will not have drowsiness or the individual will not have the altered sensorium or the individual will not have the severe headache why because initially the intracranial compliance is high so if there is increase in volume also, this bleed, it can be accommodated without rise in the intracranial pressure. But as the time progresses, the compliance decreases. That is the point when the individual will have the features of raised intracranial pressure. So if you see this lady, she had a fall three weeks ago and at that time, the bleed which has occurred has been accommodated because of increased intracranial compliance that will be there in early stages but as the bleeding keep on uh, keeps on occurring the compliance decreases then even small increase in volume is associated with large increase in intracranial pressure so that is the reason why the patient is presenting after three weeks that is subdural hematoma now you take the next clinical scenario a 52 year old man with ischemic heart disease requires treatment for an acute migraine attack that has not responded to paracetamol. Now what is the drug of choice? Actually in acute attacks of migraine, what is the drug of choice in acute attack of migraine? That is sumatriptan. But can we give this sumatriptan in case of patients with ischemic heart disease? No. So that is the reason why in these individuals the drug that should be given is high dose aspirin and as well as metaclopramide so please remember this aspirin and metaclopramide they will provide symptomatic relief in patients with migraine and this sumatriptan it cannot be given and what are the contraindications of triptans coronary artery disease past history of mi uncontrolled hypertension you should not give 
triptans okay so that is about your acute attack of migraine then you take the next clinical scenario a 75 year old has headache and painful red congested eye with a dilated non responsive pupil right what is the drug of choice so basically this clinical scenarios is like what is the treatment that you have to give so what is this clinical description suggestive of this so just now i have taught you presence of red congested high headache and dilated pupil that is suggestive of glaucoma now if it is glaucoma what is the drug that you will be giving you have to give acetazolamide what this acetazolamide will do acetazolamide will decrease the formation of the aqueous humor and after the medical management you need to do surgical intervention and that surgical intervention uh, that is you need to do peripheral iridectomy that can prevent the recurrence of the acute glaucoma again okay next you take the second clinical scenario sorry next clinical scenario a 65 year old woman presents with headache and that has lasted few weeks she gets pain in her mouth during meal and her scalp is tender on palpation so what is the drug of choice so what is this clinical uh, scenario suggest you of giant cell arthritis so it is seen in elderly females more than 50 years and the pain is increasing on chewing that is claudication within the mouth and scalp tenderness that is because of temporal arthritis so the drug of choice in case of giant cell arthritis or temporal arthritis is your prednisolone should be given and the last clinical scenario is a 59 year old man with skull fracture is suffering from very severe pain overlying the laceration to his head he has been admitted for overnight observation what is the drug that you can give so you need to give an analgesic we have two important analgesics one is morphine and the paracetamol in the options but can you give morphine in these individuals with head injury no you should give paracetamol in this patient when you give opioids what will happen is these opioids will cause pupillary constriction right so whenever you give opioids not only pupillary constriction the opioids will also cause drowsiness so this pupillary constriction and as well as drowsiness what it can do it can interfere with the neurological observation of the individual so that is the reason why morphine should not be given for a pain which is of head injury you need to give paracetamol so these are the clinical uh, scenarios for today so if you have liked the video please comment in the comments box which topic you want for further discussion thank you very much see you tomorrow again